Hi there. Welcome to section 7.5, Exponential Functions. We're going to do a little bit of graphing. I feel like we haven't graphed in ages, so we might as well start again, right? So, but these graphs are not linear. This is the first set of graphs that will not be lines for the year. First semester we graph lines, second semester we graph all kinds of crazy curves. So let's talk about first what an exponential function is. It's an equation where the variable is the exponent. That's why we solved those in the last section so that you would be familiar with those. So you might have, if we're going to graph them, y equals 2 to the x power. So our exponent is a variable. The form of it is going to be y equals a times b to an x power. Notice that x power is only on the b. It's not on the a because there's no parentheses. And notice we've got x's and y's in this equation because we need to if we're going to graph on an xy coordinate plane. Your a value cannot be 0. Your b value must be positive and it cannot be 1. Just kind of some fine print to take care of. If a was 0, the whole thing would be 0. If b was, po uh, was equal to 1, it would be 1 to a power. That never changes, so it would be linear. It's just... It's just rules that have to happen. So here's a couple examples. You can have y equals 2 times 3 to the x power. Notice how I use parentheses there. You could have y equals 4 to the x power. You could have y equals 1 half to the x power. In all of three of these equations, the b is whatever is being raised to a power. So the b in that is 3, the b in this is 4, and the b in this is one half. So in the first example, the a value is two. In the second and third example, there isn't a number out in front, which means that a would be one. A is allowed to be equal to one. So, and then we can look more at what that b value tells us. If b is greater than one, it is exponential growth, which means your graph will be getting larger most of the time. If b is less than 1, remember it can't be negative, it has to be positive. So we say between 0 and 1, which means to most of us, we're talking about a fraction, right? If b is between 0 and 1, I'll put it over here, fraction. Less than one, though. You couldn't have like three halves because that's greater than one. But if you had one half, one third, two fifths, it's exponential decay. Decay means it's getting smaller. And when we graph these guys, we are going to make a, a table of values. So let's do a graph. Graphing exponential functions. I wanted to make sure I put this down. You choose the domain. You're going to use those to find your y values. Now, everybody knows from first semester, domain is always which values? So you're going to choose the x's to find your y's. We're going to do this the old-fashioned way. We're going to put in an xy table and graph it. So example 1 says to graph y equals 4 to the x power. Find the y-intercept, state the domain and range, determine if it's exponential growth or decay. Let's graph it first, then we can talk about those other things based on our uh, graph. So remember back when we graphed lines, I always just like to use my standard negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We're going to put those x values or those domain values into the equation. I'm going to write this right over here just so I have some space. Notice it's going to be a little strange because when we put those in, we're going to be putting them into the exponent spot. So when I put a negative 2 in for the x, 4 to the negative 2. This goes back to thinking about your um, negative exponents. That's really 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16, which is really close to 0. I don't even know what that is as a decimal, probably like 0 0.083 repeating or something like that. I'm going to put 1 16th because I don't know what the decimal is. I'm going to put a negative 1 in there. That's 1 over 4 to the first power, right? Or 1 fourth or 0.25 if you like a decimal better. I'm going to
to put a zero in there. Y equals four to the zero. Everybody remembers this, right? Four to the zero power, anything to the zero power equals. I'm going to put a one in there. Y equals four to the one power. Well, that's simple. That's just a four. And last but not least, let's put a two in there. Y equals four to the second power. Four squared is 16. So now we've got ourselves a set of values. That 1 16th is going to be tricky. What I'm going to say is go super close to 0, but it doesn't quite hit 0. So my first ordered pair is negative 2 and 1 16th. So like sort of there, if my board was correct. Negative 1 and 1 4th is up a teeny bit more. Over 0, up 1. Over 1, up 4. Do you see how it's getting bigger as we go? Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4. And then last but not least, over 2, up 16. That's like falling off my graph somewhere up there. When I connect these, make it a nice curve. You might be able to see that it is a curve. So I'm going to start up here. Don't cross over the x-axis. It will never become a 0 or a negative. Trust me. So here, oops, I forgot to put my arrow on the other end. So here is my graph. Whoops. And my graph is done. I've got myself, never mind. I've got myself a nice graph. So it says to find the y-intercept. Where do you look for the y-intercept? On the y-axis, right? Y-intercept, where is it touching the y-intercept? One. Or if I looked over here in the table, y-intercept is when x equals 0, so it's a 1. Domain and range. I'll use a nice capital D. Remember how we would write it in this? Well, we picked negative 2 to positive 2, but was there any limit to what we were allowed to pick? Could I have picked negative 100 and positive 100? Sure, I could have. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. There's no limitations. You can pick anything you want. I wouldn't recommend choosing those crazy numbers, but you certainly could. The range, however, I think is easier by looking at the graph. So the range is any y value. So think up and down on your graph. Do we have a lowest value in our y's for a graph? My graph gets closer to 0 as I go into the negatives, but it never really hits 0, right? But then on the other side, it takes off and it keeps getting higher and higher and higher. So my range is all values of y. y has to be greater than 0. Do notice it doesn't say it's greater than or equal to 0. It's just greater than 0. So think in the up and down, and we'll make sure we talk about that. It's hard to see on a smart board. And last but not least, is this exponential growth or is this exponential decay? Looking at the graph, doesn't it get larger as we go? This is exponential growth. If I asked you from our original equation, what was the a value? I'm going to put in parentheses. What's the number? This is b. y equals ab to the x. y equals ab to the x power. So my 4 is getting raised to the x power. What number is it that's getting multiplied out in front, just like I said when we were talking a minute ago? That would be a big one, right? Because, sorry, because my B is, let me fix that. Because my B is 4, greater than 0, greater than 1. Oh, I got confused for a second there. That means that I've got myself exponential growth. Remember, we look at the B value if it's greater than 1. So let's do one more example. I won't mess up that B on this one. Maybe I'll actually ask you right away. Graph the equation y equals 3 times 3 fourths to the x. Do all the other stuff. If I asked you for my B value in this, what would you tell me it is? Right? The number that's getting raised to the power is the 3 fourths. So is this exponential growth or is this exponential decay? Because my B is a fraction less than 1. It's going to be decay. I also know that my graph is going to have to be getting smaller. My A value isn't telling me anything at the moment, 
so don't worry about that. So let's do the same thing. Let's put in our negative 2 to a positive 2. So I'm going to take my equation, 3 times 3 fourths to the x. You probably are going to want a calculator as we do this math. I'm going to put a negative 2 in here. 3 times 3 fourths to the negative 2. Well, that negative 2 tells me I have to use the reciprocal, so 4 thirds to the positive 2. Multiply that by 3, so that means I've got 3 times 16 over 9, which ends up being 16 over 3, which ends up being 5 and 1 third, 5.3 repeating. Check my calculations on that one. I could be off, but I think I got it. Whoops. There we go. So I'm going to do the same thing with negative 1. I'll probably erase some of my work here. 3 times 3 fourths to the negative 1 power, which means I'm going to do my reciprocal. 3 times 4 thirds to the positive power. I'm going to say that's a 1. Try it on your calculator. 3 times 4 thirds. Let me move this. Um, I'm going to put a 0 in there. 0 is the best number of all because 3 fourths to the 0 power equals 1. Still times it by 3, so I get a 3. Let's try a 1. y equals 3 times 3 fourths to the 1 power. Well, that's just 3 times 3 fourths, right? 9 fourths, if you want to go to 2 and 1 fourth, 2.25. Really, I'm okay with a decimal or fraction there as long as you know how to put it on the graph. And last but not least, I'll put a um, 2 in. So y equals 3 times 3 fourths squared. I got a square multiply, or do exponents before I multiply. Oops. Let me try that again. 3 fourths squared. So that means I've got 3 times 9 sixteen. What is that? 27 sixteenths, which is going to be, I don't know, 1 point something, 1.26 something irrational. I, don't, I can't even do the math, but I can get those numbers on the graph. So negative 2, and then up 5 and 1 third. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a teeny bit more. Negative 1, 4. That's easy to get on the graph. 0, 3. 1, 2, and 1 fourth. So 2 and a little bit more. And then 2 and then up 1 and a little bit more. Do you see? Don't make this linear. Do you see how it's starting to curve? You know how in the last one I said don't let it cross the x-axis. Do the same thing here. So we'll start up here. And we'll have it kind of curve around. Put arrows on both sides. Does it look like exponential decay to you? Is it getting smaller as you read it across from left to right? It is, right? So I've got exponential decay. Um, the y-intercept, looking at the y-axis, what's the y-intercept equal to? That would be a big 3. And domain and range. Were there any limitations on what we were allowed to choose for our domain? Again, we picked negative 2 to positive 2. Could we have picked negative 10 and positive 10? Sure. You'll start to see some repetition on that one. Range, I'm going to do that all values of y such that. Do I have a highest y value on this graph? I don't, right? Because the arrow on the left-hand side keeps going up, and it probably will continue going up. Do I have a lowest value on the graph? Well, my graph starts to get closer and closer to the x-axis on the right-hand side, but it never touches it. So I'm going to stick with that. Y has to be greater than 0 because my graph never gets down below 0. But it does look like it's getting closer and closer. And I think we've answered all the questions and we got our graph on. We're going to skip 3 and do that one in class. We need to talk about that because of that negative 2. So let's talk about one more thing. Exponential behavior. Exponential functions have a common ratio r. I don't know if you remember back in the first semester when we talked about looking for patterns on, a gra on charts like these guys and we we're only allowed to add or subtract or when we wrote equations of sequences, we we're only allowed to add or subtract. Well now, your y values must multiply or divide. x values, however, have to just steadily increase or decrease. 
So if you look at um, example 3a, notice how my x's are just adding 10 every time. Easy. My y's, however, I'm going to try to figure out what do I multiply or divide by. So to get from 80 to 40, I know I subtract 40, but I don't want to subtract. Divide by 2, right? Does that stand for the next one as well? 40 divided by 20? 20 divided by 10? 10 divided by 5? 5 divided by 2 and a half. So the question says, determine whether the data displays exponential behavior. We're going to say, yes, it does, because we divide by 2 every time. If we were being technical, we could say we multiply by 1 half. We take a half of the number every time. B, I like how my x's are increasing by 10 every time. My y's, however, we've got to figure out. Is there a pattern where we multiply and divide? Well, to get from 15 to 21, not sure. I know I add 6. 21 to 27? It looks like I've got myself a linear equation. I'm adding 6 every time. I'm going to put adding 6. This is a linear equation. We don't care about that. It says to determine if it's exponential. So the answer is no. C, you might want to grab your calculator. First of all, I like how my um, x's are increasing by 10. So I've just got that steady plus 10 every time. These ones, though, are a little bit trickier. I know the numbers are getting bigger, so I think it's going to be a multiply. So what I would do is I would take the second, divide by the first. So I would go 25 divided by 10. That should get you a 2.5, so I know I'm timesing by 2.5. Or you could do a 62.5 divided by the number before it, 25. And I believe that's a times 2.5. Or you could do the 156.25 divided by 62.5. Looks to me that that's a multiply by 2.5. So this is a yes, because we're multiplying by 2.5 every time. So we've got exponential behavior. It would be growth, because it's getting bigger. 3a would be uh, decay, because it's getting smaller. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to graph, and we're going to look at the um, pattern, see if we can multiply or divide. So in your own words, describe how to determine if a function represents exponential growth or exponential decay. If I just gave you an equation, how do you know if it's getting bigger or getting smaller? And here's your practice problem. It's not a graph. It's looking at this little table and deciding, does this represent exponential behavior? If so, what's the common ratio? What are you multiplying or dividing by every single time? That is it for section 7.5. We'll see you next time. Bring your questions. Go back and redo any parts you might need to. This section is a tricky section. There's a lot of information. We'll see you next time.